Alright guys, what is going on? So, we had a bunch of requests. You guys want to see what's in the basement, behind the safe, and you guys want to see my gun collection. So, we're going to take you behind the safe today and show you guys a little bit of what um, I utilize, what I go to the range with, what I hunt with, and then we're going to show you guys some of my gun collection. So, I got my boy from SC Arms Company, Derek Patera here. He's the guy that I go to for all my gun needs. He is a uh, Cerakoter as well, so he does a lot of milling and Cerakoting on guns. So, if you guys are in the area... His uh, company is SC Arms. We're going to put his stuff right down here. If you guys are in New Jersey, check him out. He's uh, absolutely amazing. One of my really close friends. Uh, I bought probably about 95% of my guns from him. So we're going to open up the, uh, the doors and show you guys what's behind them. So follow along. All right. What do we got behind the safe? This is the gun safe. This is where the hidden treasures are in Mikasa. So I'm going to tell you what, what guns I have. Some of them still got the tags on them. Uh, I got some of these during quarantine, and uh, the price of ammo is through the roof for some of these guns. So right now, uh, I shoot limit, so I try to limit. I try to only shoot my 9 and uh, my ARs. That's it. I try not to utilize really any other ammo besides that. Um, 40, 45 is very expensive. 300 blackout. I don't even have any of that ammo for one of these guns. I'll go through the guns, show you them, and uh, I'll let Derek explain more. Derek, what do you want to start with? You want to start with the handguns? Sure. Let's go. Let's see. <laughs> So this is Derek Patera. He is the owner of SC Arms Company. This is where I bought, literally, I'd probably say about 95% of these guns. Actually, I think, uh, yeah, because the ones that were either given to me from my father, bought at Derek's, the one was given to me, Falcor, and then I would actually say about 99% of these guns that are in here are from Derek. So um, this right here, this is my m and <laughs> This is a 9. In a, in a Glock box. Yeah, well, because... It's in a Glock box because I bought it from Derek and God forbid I get God forbid I get a free fucking box when I'm there. So I have to I, I gotta fucking put it in a little little bullshit bag and then bring it home and then put it in a Glock box because I have a Glock upstairs next to my bed. So I, that's where this goes. So Derek can explain to you why I don't have an, uh, another case for this. Um, I've shot this a bunch of times. Actually, I just oiled it and cleaned it. Um, shot it not long ago at the range, but uh, I actually bought this off a buddy Gus who was actually going to put on consignment at um, his store, and I had a permit to burn, so I was like, you know what, I'll take it. And that's literally what happened. So this is uh, a nine, I'm actually, he didn't like this, which is weird because I shot this a few times and I'm actually a big fan of this gun. I'm a, I actually, one of my favorite guns that I've been shooting lately. So I'll let Derek explain a little more about this uh, MP right here. What do we got here, what do we got? An MP9 2.0, you know, compact gun, rail on here, you know, it's a, it's a very entry level gun, but a lot of people like this gun just because of the grip. Um, you got different palm swells and stuff that you could put on it, so it's just a really good gun to have in anybody's collection, especially if you're going to be an avid shooter going to the range and stuff like that, or practice for home defense and carry all that good stuff. So, uh, this is a great piece. All right, moving on. This is going to be my Glock in the Glock case. Thanks to Derek for giving me a, you know. So, this is a subcompact 43, it's a little nine. This is something that you probably carry, it's a tiny little piece. Um, I like the gun, but what sucks is that with something like this, you're going to want like an extended mag because there's uh with the regular mag the extension. It, yeah, because this is very short. So I actually need the extension. I don't have it, um, but I actually got this uh, gun from Derek as well. Another subcompact gun, nine mil, you know, older style, but the newer one, they made the X version uh, where the frame is a little bit longer, where your pinky does sit on it and is super comfortable. But for people that want something that's a really small platform, or a small footprint on your body, especially if you're going to carry now in New Jersey, this is a really great option. Just smaller frame, smaller slide, easy to carry and conceal. So this is actually... Very reliable, too. Yeah, very fun to shoot. Um, it's a reliable gun. Um, it's the one thing I find, like you said, is that you really the extended mag really makes a, a lot of a difference. If Obviously, for a, a girl or a woman, this would be probably a lot better for smaller hands, you know. So, um, for me, it's a little tiny, so I need the extended mag. This is one of my favorite guns, um, and I'm glad I bought it because it's one of my favorite guns to shoot. Um, and I want to actually get another one of these. This is a Sig. So, uh, the old school. yeah, this is the P226. Look at, that. Look, look at all that nice oil on there. So this became one of my favorite guns to shoot. I bought it off Derek. Derek actually talked me into buying the gun because I actually never had shot um, that gun before. 
And normally I don't like to buy guns that I haven't shot, but he talked me into it and I absolutely fell in love with the gun. This is a Eagle over N model, meaning that it was manufactured in West Germany. This is when the manufacturing process of SIG still had quality in their minds, you know what I mean? So this is a, a really good quality German-made gun, no, for sure. I, f I love this gun. I love it. I love yeah. shooting it. It's literally one of the one of the nicest handguns out there. The two two six line from Sig, phenomenal. I can't believe how clean this thing is, dude. <laughs> so Did nice. you even shoot, shoot it? No. Yeah. Yeah, I think Wait, it's clean. I cleaned it myself. No. I did a good job. Yeah. Ah. Good. Ah. Definitely good. Ah. Give me props. You learn. Definitely learn. Now this the case is unnecessary, but this thing is just fun to shoot. Un it's unnecessary to have. It's a big gun. I, I, it's just, it's a range day gun for me. Not something I would run and gun with, and I think Derek would uh, agree, because it's, it's a heavy yeah. gun. But just a phenomenal range gun. Yeah, this sure. gun is, uh, this gun is big. So, this is my CZ, Tactical 2 Sport. Great gun, heavy. It shoots nines, obviously. And I bought this gun from Derek as well. Derek talked me into it. Um, I actually, one of my buddies, I actually shot this gun before one of my buddy John um, who's actually here. Uh, he's got a very similar gun that I shot. Fell in love with it. Derek had these at his store, and uh, I obviously purchased it. So this is my yeah. little CZ. <clears throat> this is for that next level shooter, you know, something that's got a way better trigger. Magwell, oh, this is very popular in the competition world. So guys that want to get uh, into the competition shooting, uh, they're going to go with something like this, like the TS2s, the Shadow 2s, and you kind of build up your gun from there. You know, they, you could put race paddles on here, different triggers. Definitely, you know, deck this thing out. So this is probably one of my top 10 favorite handguns in the world right here. The CZ line, the TS2 or the Shadow 2. Great, talked, great buy right there. He talked me into buying everything. It's a good salesman. Yeah. 90% <laughs> of his guns are bought from here. All right, moving on to the big buy. Oh, we still got a couple handguns. So... This is a 38 special. This was given to me by my father. Well, not given, but you got to transfer it. This is old, old style revolver. So um, I keep this one loaded. Just zombie apocalypse. You never know. This is uh, an Alaskan 45. It's got a big open um, trigger. It's for when they uh, wore gloves. They were able to get their finger in there. That's what it was explained to me. This is just an old, um, more like a historic gun. But this is a... I don't even think Derek would be able to tell me. It's got a Mustang on it, Derek. What is it? Who knows? Let me see this oh. thing. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to play this on Colt 45. Yeah. <laughs> it's an Alaskan 45. This... It, shoots, it shoots 45 longs. Uh, it's made in Connecticut. Oh, could be a Colt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it could be a Colt, Colt but I could be wrong, though. I don't want to sound like an idiot, though. It says CT USA, though. That's the year. Uh, it doesn't say. It's all washed out. But it's, it's a cool drop. piece, yeah. And this is a little... I think yeah. that... Could be a Colt. Could be. Colt, yeah, the Colt was made in Connecticut. I learned that on Pawn Stars. What? Yeah. The Colt was made in Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> this is... Uh, Derek, I don't even know. This is... Uh, it looks like an old SIG. Right? Look on this stuff. Yeah. Is that the SIG Sour symbol? No, no that's... Uh, Crown N symbol two. This is a JP Sauer and Son. That's what that is. Little twenty twos. No, this is a little three eighty. Little three eighty JP Sauer. That's see, a pretty cool gun. This is uh, so look. It, let's see the markings on it. It says Cal. Cal seven point six five. Yeah. Usually means. I think it needs. I think it needs to get oil because put, put the pull the slide back. No, that's that's smooth. Yeah. That's real smooth. Yeah. That's a nice little gun. Felt sticky to me. Yeah, very cool gun. Does that mean there are some 380 rounds from you? Yeah. I mean, I've never shot that ever. So I got, um, I got a boar knife in here. Brian Dobson gave this to me uh, for boar hunting years ago. Wrote on it. This was he gave it to me when I was in Metroflex Gym Arlington. So I got a ton of ammo down there. Um, obviously, I was stockpiling ammo during quarantine. Everybody thought the fucking world was gonna end up in uh, mayhem. So like. All my other redneck friends that did what any other redneck would do and stock up on ammo. So, um, moving on to the, the bigger toys. You're such an idiot. Oh, yeah. 
This guy had yet to shoot. <laughs> this is my Troy. This I don't have any. So in the in the state of New Jersey, okay, you have to have most of the time anything. You can't have a collapsible stock, correct, Derek? No, pin stock, pin muzzle brake, but ten round mag. But on certain guns, because they're considered a non-classified, right? They're not. So is it, what is it a non NSA? This, uh, this doesn't classify as a long gun or as a, as a rifle, so it's better known as the other firearm. Um, that's what a lot of people are buying and building now in the state of New Jersey. Um, that's actually a Troy Industries. Um, you have the 300 Blackout one? Yep, that's what yeah, this one is. The 300 Blackout one, so um, super cool gun. Um, it's, it's basically like the loophole gun in New Jersey because of its pistol brace. Because of its pistol brace here, the vertical foregrip, and its overall length from the end of the buffer tube to the tip of the muzzle, um, makes this gun legal to have an adjustable pistol brace and that and that vertical foregrip. So originally, this gun was designed to be a two-handed operation. You're supposed to put your arm through the pistol brace, and you were supposed to hold it out there. Um, but there was a lot of uh, confusion back and forth with the ATF whether you could shoulder fire this gun or hold it out in front of you, but the ATF said, you know, it doesn't make a difference whether it's against your shoulder or out in front of you. Um, but that's to the discretion of local ranges too. Some give you shit, some, they, some don't, but uh, very cool gun, um, very cool platform, for sure. I've yet to shoot it too. Yeah. The ammo for it was ridiculous when I bought the gun, but I didn't want to pass up on the gun because what happens is they can pass a law to where this gun becomes Right, illegal, but you can be grandfathered so, in. So I actually spoke with the owner of Troy Industries too, and if they ever like, if ATF continues to, you know, mess with our rights, sort of say, and try to ban this stock, the owner of Troy said that, you know, easy fix to make this back into a rifle in the state of New Jersey would be replace this pistol brace with a regular stock. You pin it, and then to bring the overall length of the barrel back to state compliant. He would make like a longer compensator or something like that, or a big long muzzle brake that we could just pin and weld to the to the barrel, bring it back to its 16 overall length on the barrel, and then you you're back to What's a, a 12, rifle. 12 this is a 12.5, yeah. yeah. 12 and, and that doesn't a 12.5s and the others don't have to be um, pinned or welded. The 10 and a halfs do. Um, so you could even put a flash suppressor on that 12.5, which is another really cool feature for New Jersey because it doesn't qual qualify as a a long gun. <laughs> this is a Dark Storm V1. Industries. V1. V1. It's a so, Ed Earl design. I've shot this before. I bought this from Derek. Um, this has, see the difference? This stock is also allowed to move. Now you're going to see, we move on to the next one, which is Falcor. When I do that to the stock, this stock is not going to move. Um, on the next one that we touch. So um, I actually have, yeah, have I shot this one yet? I think uh, you brought that to the range though, the I, last time. I we did, I shot yeah. this, yeah, I shot this, I shot this one and I shot that one. I have not shot that one or the, or, uh, the little 22, the um, AR that's chambered in the 22. So another great uh, rifle. I actually happen to, to be very good friends with the owner of this company. Um, and we've been doing business for a long time. So I, I put Guy on this uh, other just because the V1 series is a full billet uh, other, billet upper, billet lower. Um, and then it comes with a lot of cool features. It comes with ambidextrous, uh, ambidextrous charging handle, safety, extended takedown buttons, some of them. Uh, you got the Ambi sling loop here. And just this design by, by uh, Ed Earl is just a super cool design. Um, and Darkstorm really knocked this thing out of the park. So kudos to Darkstorm. You guys make a phenomenal rifle. Uh, huge fan and always will be. This is uh, this is definitely a nice piece. Here. This so show. I had Derek come over because I, I bought a lot of these guns from Derek. Derek knows the ins and outs of these guns much more than I do. Um, I've been getting into the tactical industry over the past five years. My knowledge is very good, but nowhere near what these guys are. So. Um, whenever it comes to guns, I always will bring out somebody who knows way more than I do because I want you guys to get the uh, most bang for your buck when you're coming to my channel. And if I'm posting a video, I want it to be educational and I want you guys to gain something from it. So <laughs> Huge. So my Huge. friends go to the gym every day, so my friends have never been to a gym day in their life. Peanut butter and jellies.
all day, every day. This one. <laughs> this one. This one is my baby right here. What, are you leaving? No. So this right here is my Falcor. Um, this is my AR-15. Absolutely love this gun. My favorite AR that I have. Um, this one I did not get from Derek. Uh, but Falcor, the owner, Jason and Melinda Sonju are amazing people. Um, I've met them years ago, and uh, I've been to SHOT Show at their booth. Um, they brought me out, offered me to go to uh, Montana hunting many times. So um, something I'm going to do in the future with this gun. Um, I got from uh, Jason and Melinda. I paid for it. Um, they hooked me up with a uh, phenomenal discount, but they're phenomenal people. One of my favorite ARs to shoot. Um, Derek obviously knows uh, about the Falcors as well. A high-end AR. That it is. That it is. Also a fully ambidextrous lower, which is a really nice feature for an AR. Um, really nice triggers. Falcor Defense um, worked with this company called Dracos. They make this aluminum lined barrel, so it really keeps this gun cool. Uh, you know, you could throw 500,000 rounds down range and this handguard will stay nice and cool. Just great overall piece, great workmanship, craftsmanship, machining, just everything, just nice fit, form, function, you know? And John, John Bartolo gave me that actually. Yeah. Uh, John passed away last year. I'm um, actually one of the guys that got me into the uh, tactical world. He actually gave me this is that. Uh, yeah. Really? Why? You think it's too short? I don't know. It feels out a little far. I like being a little bit closer. Are you? What do you mean? You, but I got long arms though. So yeah, it's I'm a short, little bit shorter. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. That's I mean, good, it's perfect. Yeah. It's right there. Um, very, very nice piece. This one I haven't shot. This one is for the rodents. This one I got from you. This is the air. <laughs> the air. <laughs> Biggest caliber rifle you got. <laughs> twenty-two, baby. So this is a this is an AR chambered in the twenty-two. This is like for a little fuck to fuck around on the yard. To be honest with you, um, this shoots little twenty-twos. Guy usually little goes guys. outside in his yard and he grabs his little Yosemite Sam pistol over there and his little rifle and <laughs> killing rabbits and gophers in his yard. <laughs> uh, H and K. Uh, you talked me into buying this one over here. Yeah, and start. it's just a cheap twenty-two. You know, something that he could shoot here is in his yard. You know, he's got tons of property and stuff like that. So, um, just really, really cool. I need twenty-twos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that zero. I got all the fucking high caliber fucking rounds. Yeah. High caliber. Um, this gun. This is a funny story. I'll let Derek tell uh, this story because if I were to tell this story, you guys would be like, "Yeah, okay, guy." In your dreams, bro. But. This is. <laughs> now that's Elmer the Fudd right there. <laughs> that's Elmer Fudd. That fucking thing is nice. So this gun, Derek Cerakoted, Gator Skinned, and uh, a fan bought this gun for me, along with the Subcompact 43 that you guys just saw. So I bought this from Derek. This is a uh, little hunting rifle. So I'll let Derek explain. This Shot. was Derek's gun. It's uh, a shotgun that he owned. And he customized himself, so I'll let him explain it because he was the one who bought it originally, customized it, and then sold. And then uh, a fan bought it from him, and he gave it to me. So I'll let him explain the uh, behind the series gun. <laughs> this gun actually has some crazy history too. So I had this gun. This was my first duck hunting shotgun, and I brought this out duck hunting in the canal. And I'm sitting on a little aluminum boat, and here comes a Woody flying over. I pick up my gun and I go to follow this Woody. I shoot it and the fucking seat breaks off and I fall into the canal and this thing goes right into the canal, right to the bottom of it. Probably like 13 degrees outside, I get down in my skibbies and I was like, I gotta get this gun, I'm not leaving it at the bottom of the canal. So we're literally diving down, I'm freezing my ass off, I thought I was gonna die. Found it, uh, brought it back to the store and I said, you know what, we gotta Cerakote this thing, we gotta deck it all out. Redid it all and then I had this local guy that does really, really nice leather work engraved the stock and then inlaid real alligator skin uh, into the gun too and then we just put it up for a price and here comes a buyer that that new guy and and uh and he bought the gun for him and, and now it's in his safe now you got the gator gun yeah guy's name was kevin morris uh he was a, a fan helped him uh, he was a military guy helped him lose a bunch of weight um i guess he felt somewhat in debt to me and he turned around and added for no reason just bought the gun uh, his nick, his name on uh, Instagram is Sauce Money. 
uh, S A U C E and money. Um, I don't know if he's, uh, I haven't heard from him in a while, but yeah, I uh, hung out with him a couple of times, met him uh, in Florida after the Olympia the one year. But uh, yeah, just a, a big fan and ended up just, uh, yeah, buying these guns out of nowhere. So uh, yeah, thanks to him. Got this gun, so. <laughs> Bro, this, I can't believe how nice this fucking leather work was. I forgot all about it. I no, it gives these maxis. <laughs> I'd be buying this thing back. Five grand. Yeah. <laughs> Comes with seawater. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're right about Dirty canal water. Yeah. You're right about scratch on it. Meanwhile, you were fucking <laughs> scuba diving for it. I almost died for that gun, dude. King calls. He sent me a uh, turkey, turkey call. call. Yeah. Hey, listen. I know something about something, Gary. Such a country boy. Yeah. So, I will uh, show you where I do my gun cleaning. So, follow along. So, this is my little uh, station where I... Uh, my buddy John actually gave me the idea to do this because he uh, came over one day showing me how to clean my gun. So, I bought a bunch of stuff. I got some board cleaner here. I bought a uh, whole entire cleaning kit bunch of rags, got some rubber gloves, uh, I got the rubber mat to lay down, I got a bunch of different breakthrough clean right here, I got all my different sprays, lubricants for the uh, for the guns, all my brushes, so what I would like to do eventually is to make this into like a, you know, kind of make this into almost like a, a, a gun room and, uh, you know, maybe put a, a wall here and, you know, some pegboards so where I can hang everything and, you know, section this off and kind of have because right now as you can see I got extra rugs here, extra dog beds I got all my tools and shit and uh, so I just kind of use it for storage right now so um, in the meantime obviously we're going to show you guys a crib style little video and give you guys a little uh, tour of the house at some point but I'm um, just showing you guys a little bit about uh, you know what I do and I'll take you guys since we're doing um, guns and ammos and all that fucking redneck shit I'm going to take you in the garage real quick and show you guys my, uh, my bow that I go hunting with um, my new one that I got from Derek actually that he was talking about upstairs earlier so um i'm gonna take you quick into the garage and then uh we're gonna call it a day party fucking frat house sorry oh we also got a request to see you do more skateboard tricks why you gotta you're supposed to so so I, my skateboard tony can attest he's behind the camera T tony can can i hang on the skateboard for what yes, you see you okay so he wants to do like uh, uh, me, he wants to teach me a little more about skateboarding. So he wants me to get back to my old self because I used to skateboard and snowboard a lot. So if you guys want to see me like get back to my little skater trash days, comment below fucking skater trash and maybe I'll get back on the skateboard. This right here is my, uh, this is my little bow and arrow. This is uh, the one I go shooting with, hunting with. Got this set up, bought this from Derek. Uh, it's an elite bow, ember right there. It's got the fiber optic on it. It's got the uh, we got kisser button on it. I got the uh, drawstring for the release. Uh, my dad put the little feather there, obviously just to see the wind direction. Uh, you got your rest here, felt. These are silencers right here. That's your peep sight. Stabilizer bar right here. And uh, this is easy for me because this is a, uh, it's got a very high let off, which means when you pull it back, I think this is about 80 or 85% let off, which means when you pull it back and you're at your full draw length, you're only hold, uh, 85 percent of the bow. You're not holding. 85 percent of it is, is let off, so you're only holding the 15 percent. That's my release. Just hangs in there, and then when you pull it back and you want to release it, that's you just shoot it, and then that's how the uh, see how I can see how easy that is. You have to really because that's like holding nothing. That's like holding literally air. So you actually have to let it up nice and slow, and then it just goes. So that's my. Hunting bow. Got some arrows right there. You don't want to fuck with me. I'm gonna, somebody's going to eat this phone. board. Somebody's going to eat it. This is going to be bad. It's a skinny fucking board. Skinny fucking skater. This board is so old, bro. It's got flicks. Are we filming this? Everybody can do that. <laughs> fucking fuck this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was 100 pounds lighter when I did this. Give him the Crocs. 
Put him in sport mode and stop being a pussy. They have birdhouse, alien workshop. Let's see this fucking kid. So everybody can kick for it and not land it. I can do that. <laughs> Let's see it, Tony. I'll film you. Tony's crazy good. Don't even. It's can you not do even a funny. Do flip for us? Yeah, yeah. Tony. Probably. I'll, I'll ruin it. <laughs> I just did a set. <laughs> oh, oh. You can't roll on the rug, bro. Oh, that was good. Shove it. You fucking shit me. You don't even get points for that in Tony Hawk, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> don't die! Oh my oh, god, Nick! No. Nick! Nick! Get off of the concrete. Yeah, that's why it's on the carpet. For fucking safety. Not yeah, not not all 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 seasoned veterans. This is where they go. Joe, all you're gonna hear is you breathe it all the time. You breathe all the time. It's not like you just wrestled the bolt. Determined to win. Oh my god. Close enough. Hard flip. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a hard flip. That's pretty damn impressive. <laughs> Red hand. Jesus? The, what, the one? Are you, what? You already have one in your hand. I know you're taking. Yeah. What flavor is that? Not pineapple. What's the other one? That's fine. You want mandarin? That doesn't matter. Thank you. I don't need some flavor. I'm like a hooker. Where's the shirt? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, he's fucked. Oh, look, what is he got? He got a shirt on. No. Tucked somewhere in his pants. No. Smiling. Where's no, where? Derek? Made out of you. You better. Check your inventory after what he just did. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this little segment of uh, checking out the gun collection. Showing you guys what's in my basement. The guns that I have, Derek stopped by and uh, was very informative. Broke down the guns for you guys. Uh, explained a little more. And um, shout out to his uh, store, SC Arms Company. You guys, check it out right here. I'll put it right here. Let him know... Uh, your boy guy sent you. So um, we're going to do another episode. Uh, you guys saw a little bit of my house today. So we're going to do a house tour, kind of like an MTV to NTVib. And MTV crib style type of video for you guys. Because you guys have been asking to see my house. So we wanted to start with the hardcore stuff. So we started in the basement, in the safe with all the fucking guns. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Till next time. Quadro, Sister Nino. Like, comment, subscribe down below. We're out. Pow!